thank you very much for the invite. Um, so I assume you you have um, you, have you been all of you there uh, yesterday in the morning? So uh, with Bigita, uh, my partner and wife, who uh, started a bit to to open up. Um, so now my uh, my invitation or task is to wrap up. I assume a project, but I've not been involved into it. Nevertheless, I will try to just take a. Uh, I will mess up. I will not make 15 minutes, that's for sure. So I will go, I will go for 20, 20 plus. But I hope it's going to be uh, stimulating or at least uh, interesting. I valorize also the dialogue that we will have after that, uh, I assume. Um, actually, everything is connected. Um, I don't know, it looks like a political panel before with lines like uh, all the party and we have to vote. I assume uh, there is no solution. There is no one solution. It's just there is one solution at the momentum that works, and then there is another one. So I assume communication is a critical issue here. And when I came here, I um, all of you, I assume, I um, I I go online, I read, and I realize uh, I saw a research from a professor in Aarhus that just find out like uh, trees they have a heartbeat. And actually, it's too slow for us to see it, but actually, uh, it's uh, six hours. It's uh, moving by cadence, like one centimeter. So then I was thinking, shit, trees have a heartbeat. So then we will have a, a movement, uh, an awareness about we have to respect that maybe we should not kill trees and so on. So at the end of the day, maybe like we always think we are the good guys. And there is the bad guy and, um, and we have to help them in a colonialist way. And I'm thinking maybe there is no good, nice composite material. The good material, it's no material. So there is good, no good alternative to plastic bag. You just have no plastic bag. Or there is no good car. You just have no car. <laughs> I think sometimes we have to be a bit, uh, you know, reality hits the fan. Uh, um, because uh, we, we try to find nice life to compensate and to still keep everything we have and to make them still balance to the, the storm of this planet. Um, anyway, I talk always too much. I'm going to go uh, to uh, this. Um, I don't know if Bigita talked about it, just to really reframe like, uh, who is that guy? So I am Alexander, French, 47, I'm designer. Uh, we have been, uh, we lost ourselves in translation in Norway for 15 years from Paris. We wanted to create an ID factory and we, we did it in Norway in a village. It's called Transplant. It was built by, with a Renzo Piano architect, uh, Attila Eris. And then it was a platform where art and creativity and innovation is gathering and meeting and we were discussing uh, interesting or complex or non-complex topics. Uh, 11,000 people came, it was very nice, it was an adventure, a project, it has a beginning and an end, it ended up in 2013, and uh, now we went to something further, and we're actually uh, Ambra, you are part of it, where you were there, among others. So that's where I was. Uh, that was my citizen Kane. We did, uh, for example, we worked when we tackled our responsibility as a designer, we, like Jung Thakara wrote, or uh, when he observed the metabolism of design uh, value chain, 80% uh, of the environmental impact is designed or is decided at the design phase. So when you choose the material, the system you are uh, uh, going to play around with, even at the level of research or implementation as designer, you define what's going on out there. So you, ha you have a, a huge responsibility. So after, uh, um, that's why I say, there is no sometimes good alternative to, to material. Sometimes we have to take a radical choice and say um, it has to be taken away. Um, ah, the interesting one is interesting. The one on the top, cafe, uh, cafe composite material, Norwegian being the most, the country drinking the most cafe in the world. So I don't know what's the, re the record. People like record. I don't know what's the record in Sweden, What you would be the, I don't know if it's coffee or, or something else. Um, anyway, we work on that. We worked also, press the button, 
We work also uh, on uh, being a designer on a research through design program that we called Ideal Lab, where we uh, tackled uh, uh, social issues such as by wave of one year, such as uh, uh, waste of food, the whole value chain. You know, 46% of the food in the US has been lost from extraction, transformation, consumption. I assume it's a bit the same with us. Um, we have to reflect on that. It's a system. And uh, there is no point to try to handle the small plastic bag in the value chain because that's not the big problem. That's not where it hurts. It hurts all along the value chain. So we have to take a bit some... Uh, 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 go back, go up, I mean, and see what's going on. That's what we did also in ID Lab, and we speculate then uh, with, as a collective uh, on uh, uh, speculative answers, or at least to define a good context for the question. Uh, we had 52 people invited from socio-anthropologues, artists, designers, architects, researchers, and so on. Um, I, I have two slides with text. Is it okay? Okay, because I wanted to for you to a bit uh, relax, uh, maybe to invite you for for a trip, and after I have a bit of a surprise because it's going to be a bit of a party. Uh, I was told so. Uh, we have to start it up. So after Ideal Lab research through design program seven years, we had a big break, and we were thinking, okay, now time to reflect because if we are continuing, we are in a loop. We're just going to continue what we are doing, and it's going to be boring. And life is too short, so we want to have fun as well. So we're thinking, what's next? So we start to reflect and say, ID Lab was uh, uh, anchored with one place. It was our program. And uh, we realized that because people were thinking, oh, I have to visit you. Maybe like people here, they say, oh, you may, I have to visit you. They were allocating our activity with a space, site related. And we say, we have to spread the, bill, the, the ownership of this uh, uh, thinking, modus operandi, to specific, uh, to everybody, to a lot of places. So we're thinking we have to create a movement, the idealist. And then we go for idealists, for a lot of culture. It's not really serious, a bit naive, or sometimes a bit, um, it's a bit like a dreamer. But still, I totally endorse and I assume that. So we wanted to tackle it with a name that is a bit serious. So we're thinking idealist bank or maybe uh, idealist, and it, uh, now it's idealist institute. Might change, but for now it's like that. Uh, people are signing on, and uh, when you sign, you have uh, you write a bit of uh, reason why you are joining uh, uh, us. Uh, Tour Bakke is a philosopher from formation, social anthropologist, and urban planner in a big architectural studio in Bergen, Norway. Uh, do I have to read it, or you read it? You read it while I was talking. You read it? OK, no? Okay, I leave you, uh, it's boring if I read it, so I leave you maybe 20 seconds. Okay. Get it? Ideas Institute, we wrote a manifesto, and just to share with you, uh, it's really the baseline, again, it's in mutation. Uh, it has to be open, transformable, courageous, taking risk, immersive, emerge in the context. I don't know for you, but very often we were talking about something, and just by Googling it, or reading a book, or reading a paper, we were, I was thinking, okay, I get it. I got the substance, but actually a real immersion I mean, one month, two months, three months, in the ground of operation, it's worth a lot. Um, iterative, understandable. Um, we, I'm going to explain why after. Careful, just and thought. It's on the website if you want to know more. The big critical question, it seems that we're maybe uh, asked according to this tool. It seems it's a, a, a new tool that everybody's tackling, this 3D printing that first all the nerd, they had a 3D printer somewhere on the box. You are printing useless stuff. And after you try to find meaning out of it, what I'm going to do out of it. Uh, now it's going big scale. And now I, in a prospective, I was talking with architects. Some people are even thinking about 3D printing cities, literally. 
Um, so what kind of value this tool will tackle actually to create communities? Because it's, it's here we're, we're talking about creating a house and it's a link, it's an, a module, several modules articulated, creating a social environment, so-called cities. So um, if it's dead, it's just a house. If it's uh, working with people, it's inter interconnected. Here's an example of uh, MX 3D project. It's in Amsterdam and actually they are 3D printing bridges. Okay, uh, a bit like Ross Lover Grove, biomimetic based, uh, but still uh, they had a lot of hardcore way to have uh, make it work because the computer had a problem to figure it out, the behavior of steel, but now it's going on. Uh, so instead of affirming things, I'm just going to sum up uh, that. I think I'm going to go for, from now, I, I think it might be 15 minutes from now. I'm going just to share with you some questions. So is it about enriching network? We have been involved into an EU project as well called Inomanet. I don't know if you have heard about it. No? It was a pilot project that was in FP7. Uh, Europe is spending 500 milliard euro plus in research. That's how the EU project are founded. And actually, uh, um, a lot of it doesn't find uh, an impact on the market. Shortcut, it's an invested money in a project, but it doesn't reach, uh, it doesn't create value. Uh, how many percent do you think it's, it doesn't fail? Give me a number. Go on. Be courageous. Everything that happens here stays here. Europe is investing money, it's creating value. It's creating value. How much of that value is lost? Doesn't create value for Europe. 80? Wow. Which means we're in a company where everybody's paid, you have salaries, but nobody, 80% of worth for nothing. That's a big number. Somebody else? 93 last time we checked. Which means you have a lot of waste or some, a lack of something. And then that's what, that's what we have this problem. Actually, we try to figure out, go into that. And the problem is there is a gap between research and market. There is a lack of communication. Researchers are researching, writing papers, finding stuff, but it doesn't reach the market. And it goes somewhere else in other countries, often. And then actually it's creating a few impacts. So actually to connect research with the market is a critical issue. So to bring research with SME, that's where it lays. That's the solution. We, did, we didn't really succeed, we tried to map it. If you want to know more, it's still on the database. What was a bit sad is we worked a lot. We worked our ass off, maybe like you, three years, mapping, blueprint, network, database, and so on. And after three years, flushed. Everything was destroyed. I was thinking, can I buy the database, please? Can I have access to that? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it would be nice to iterate. And how could we iterate on that? Is it about resource? Or is it lim about limited resource? John Thakara, we work with him. He wrote a nice book. I don't know if you... Uh, did you read In the Bubble? You did? No? I really encourage you. It's a good book. Very easy. He, he's a guy who spent his life... Uh, to map and to write about system and networks and dynamics. And so he was the chair of the, uh, the um, Academy of Design in um, Amsterdam, I think, in Royal College as well. And now he's living in France, south, because he loves it. Um, and it's, uh, you have two or three slides in the book that just tell you everything. He searched for 30 years or 40 years all the theme we were talking about. So I, I really encourage you to read it, and he, had, he just wrote another book that's called uh, uh, How to Thrive in the New Economy. It's like part two. So he's saying everything is connected. Um, 1,000 years ago, now, topic here is resource. How many do you think resource that guy is using compared to this guy more? I try to make it playful. 20? 20, 20, 20 here, 20 more, 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 more. <coughs> wow, that's 60 times. So that guy, in terms of resource, just to be there with his connection, uh, uh, the grid, the infrastructure, consumption of energy and so on, is there. So when John Takara says everything is connected, it's not only upon the plastic bag, it's not only about the trees, it's about everything. 
and it's, it's uh, exp exponential. That's, is it about emergency? CO2 emission per capita is growing. That's the big issue. Last time I checked, I think it was 60,000 people who died with air pollution and so on. That's, a, that's an emergency. So it's not about your fridge or quality or if we're going to do that. I mean, if we want to also tackle these issues, I think first that, after the rest. But that's my point of view. Critical issue, that's a massive emergency. It's not to be sensational, because after I'm going to be fun. But that's reality. I, of course, when we say plastic, polymer, PLA, and fine, I mean, also, I'm, I'm the good guy. No, I never waste. We respect nature, because we don't have to, because we have that luxury, we have garbage, we have a stable society, we have access to everything. But that, I mean, I, mean, I don't know, two, three milliard on the planet, that's their reality. And that's, and they don't have a choice. I mean, they are not like, uh, they are poor people, uh, totally uncultivated. They just don't have the choice because there is no grid, network, and so on. So I think, okay, it's nice to make a PLA pla bag, but I think that that's the problem. That's not the bag. So, of course, we can spend a lot of time to make p new PLA, but I think if we don't change that paradigm, we are fucked. So, uh, yeah, period. Because they are growing much faster than the problem of the plastic bag. And that's where it hurts. So, uh, by the way, this is a river. And it's in uh, Manila. You can walk on the water? Yeah, because it's so charged with the river. The, it was taken uh, six months ago. It was so charged with waste, people, they, they, there is a lack of network, ecosystem, and so on. They threw everything in the river, and after it's growing, it's, it's static, and that's it. So when we say plastic pollution and so on, of course it's not you and me. We are educated people, nice, we clean our own stuff, we park our car, we pay our tax. Okay, so let's work together on that. Why you have a problem? Is it about scale? Of course it's about scale, insane scale. Uh, last time we checked, World Economic Forum, in the next uh, 35 years, we will need to build the same amount of urban infrastructure, grid, network, electrical line, subway, bridge, than we have in the last 3,500 years. That's massive. So how do we... You remember the title, how this tool, 3D printing, is going to tackle, or what kind of problem the 3D tool is going to enter, I mean, Okay, we have a tool, what do we do? What's the context? That's the context. So here, how do we address that? Also versus that. Because if we do, if we're going to build in 35 years, the same amount that we had in 3000 years, but with the same modus operandi that we did there, I mean, here we are like quadra fucked in 35 years. So now, and even like now it's disappeared, but uh, uh, the best uh, cosmologue ever really like predict that we have a problem for humanity. So uh, I think it, he, he was meaning about that. You remember the, pla the, the material technology? Is it the, pro the, 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 the inter interconnection with the 3D printing? Is it also about trusting and following research? You remember one of the small pictures, it was this style. Do you know about heat urban island? Or urban heat island? You know about that? No? Um, when the sun, sun is nice, solar panels are nice. When the sun, uh, climate warming, you get that? CO2, so on, big problem. Uh, one of the biggest causes of global warming, it's the urban heat island. Meaning, in a nutshell, the sun is hitting a city, the, s the roofs of the city are dark. You know, when it's very hardcore sun, don't wear a black t-shirt, go for white. As simple as that. When you go with a, a city with dark tiles, 80% of the energy of the sun is kept in the infrastructure. They are just getting warmer. And then London, all the city in the world, the construct, actually they're just keeping the heat and the temperature between outside and inside the city is like four, three, five, six, seven degree higher than outside. That's creating a heat urban island. And that's creating a massive climate I mean, CO2 impact. Uh, and the, that phenomenon is caused 28% of the CO2 impact. 
So it sounds uh, stupid, but if we trust research, if I trust you, your presentation was spot on, thank you. If I trust you, then I really have to trust you and we have to implement what you said together uh, at that level. If we change the tiles there, and it's on the market, it's German and uh, Netherlands, it's Dutch and a German producer, then we solve 30% of the problem. So now it could also, at the level of policies, EU, I love EU for that, that's where it hurts, because companies, they're not going to change the whole production line just because to save the world. Sometimes they don't care. The world is fine. We don't have yet an impact. So we have to go at the policy level. Now it's going to be solar roof or green roof soon in France, I don't know in Sweden, but you will have policies that will come. So next time you build a house, now we are watching, it has to be white. Is it about transformative grid? Yeah, we talked about transformative. Uh, do you know that project? No? Yes. Uh, most architects, they design or they, they speculate it actually. It's a real, it's built on, uh, with the Fibonacci uh, uh, sequence on uh, how to articulate Fibonacci in 3D. So actually the whole house is uh, angled, the opening and so on is the follow the gold number proportion, the way the light's coming in and so on. Because so how do you articulate it? For now it's biomimetic, I assume. Uh, um, that's another track. Um, we met, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, you met, Bigita, uh, Barbara, at a lecture uh, as well. Uh, they are, come on. Is it, do we have to click? It was working? Yes. Um, they are working with Mars, with regulate, regulate material. We talked about it when we were outside, about how to process also. Uh, you had the idea to go with inflatable and project on it, and maybe, or do we go from the inside and then a vacuum? Or here actually in extreme, I know that on Earth they are testing in a desert the same condition to try now to, at least with the temperature, not the gravity fully, but how do you, in extreme environment or non-terrestrial environment, how could you 3D uh, print? How are we, what are we going to learn from that in terms of structural and so on? That could be also uh, interesting. Um, there is always something interesting happening on the edge that we can bring back uh, to the real world. Uh, is it about maintaining? Somebody last time uh, earlier talked about, uh, I think you talked about maintenance. You are working with that, maintenance of buildings. Uh, here it's a big project in Bergen, MAD. They work on the largest project with, uh, when they embed a bit the C2C, cradle to cradle, but towards architecture. And actually they go for, a, try to reclaim building. So they try to unbuild the building, but keep all the doors, kill all the, 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 the windows and so on. They encounter a big problem, it's the regulation. The national certification office say, you can't use that door. I say, why? It was certified 30 years ago. Yeah, but it's not any longer, it's not, it's not a new product. So you have to recertify it, but then it's, it's a bit stupid. So there is a, a breaks at the level of certification. So I assume here, if you want to put that in loops to uh, create li a good life cycle, uh, when we work with 3D printing, is it, will it be possible to certify the permanent consistency and quality of the material? Because it's a bit biosource, is it possible? How is it going to be certified per countries? That will be something we have to tackle. Um, is it about parts? Some people told me it's not about the house, it's more about the parts of the house. It's not relevant really to build a wall and so on because there is a lot of critical also questions. We already build walls. It's all, it may, is it going to take away human force to destroy some social ecosystem, to take away some... That, that's also something we have to address. Is it going to create only values for the builders of the 3D printer? Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, fast robotics, of course, here, is it about time or speed? And if we earn time, if it's really about that, what are we doing during the, with the time we earn? And this time earn is creating, yeah, it's, if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if we earn time, uh, uh, um, what kind of value is going to, to build and for who? Only 
So I, I have a bit of problem for that. We, it's about details, the texture, the material and finish that this is going to make. The material you see on the back, it's a, oh, you can guess, what kind of material is it? Wood. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a almond powder. It's a waste of the Spanish wood industry. You know, powder. Uh, you have a shell around the almond, the very hard stuff. They are crushing it down because it's a lot of waste, totally unvalorized, and they, it's the charge for composite material they are using to make a panel material for. And they put some uh, vegetable oil and a bit of bad resin in it, and uh, then they make a panel that they, by gravity, mold like a waffle. <coughs> So you have two choices. You have uh, aluminium mold, a bit expensive mold, but very sexy render, a bit like here. Or you have silicone mold, a bit like the paste we had when we were to the dentist. Uh -uh. <laughs> the very uncomfortable feeling. A bit cheaper, a bit, not so much longevity for the mold, but you are precise to 0 0.2 millimeter in the texture transfer. So you can mold skin or leather and you can perform. So we use that and we did actually the wall of our center. We just took a pile of paper, it's an ID factory, ID start at the paper level, so we just literally took a one euro pile of paper, strap it, put it in silicone and we molded 700 square meter of facade. It was quite enough sustainable because it's a, 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 a facade which is 100% nearly made, I mean 90 based on waste. And the material is very good behavior. It handled big summer and 20, minus 20 with snow. So here is the, the detail and the, the pattern we're going to create with it. Um, I'm scared to push the button. I told you. Ah, sorry. Is it about the machine? You know, we talk about the machine, and first also the 3D printer, it's not only the 3D printer, you have a computer behind. And nobody really questioned the computer behind. So I don't know if you know them, they are Glittero Studio, they went out from Real College of Art, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And they are really into uh, uh, the process. So here they are manipulating and questioning, actually they are not, they are designers they are, that are building machines. And after, they have a manifesto when they say the machines have to perform, the machine have to produce, the machine have to be understood by your children. So actually, they make installation and so on, but there the result is as important as the process. So here it's about a new technique, this plaster profiling and so on, and the texture and, and the quality it makes. So I don't know, have you printed a house yourself? or use a big 3D printer, I didn't. So I think we have also ourselves to put the hand into it, a bit like that, and to manipulate again, again, again. So it's getting under their skin, a bit like they do. That's what I meant when I say immersion. So you can check them online, they have an amazing result and beautiful poetic world. And they are extremely talented and fun people. Um, when, is it about connection? 3D printing, we, we make a house, okay, a house, it's a house, it's a wall. You know Edward Thiel? Oh yes, he's an anthropologue, uh, and in the 60s, 60s Mad Men era, he did something that uh, he, he mapped a bit the human behavior. And then he went with one tool that's called the proxemics. So proxemics, that small person in the middle, it's a, per, yeah, it's a human being from top, and he says the proxemics is the, the, the approach that defines the amount of space that I need between me and things to feel comfortable. So, and he defined it with bubbles. So, intimate space, personal, social, public. So now, what's interesting is what's going on between. And he find out like these, those distances, they are cultural, which means they are shifting. You, you, you know the café uh, terrace in Paris? That's also a cliché. But we are, the brain is working with metaphor and storytelling, so you see the, the, that. It will never work in, in, for example, Norway. 
because we need more distance. Or maybe some civilization needs more distance. I assume maybe I, I collectively I thought the Nordic people, Swedish, I don't know, Finnish, they're a bit shy. No, no, I don't see you are shy, but I mean, we will see. So here, um, okay, how long am I? I'm social with you. And now we are, we are public. Okay, let's try something. Uh, I'm getting personal. Yeah, and now actually, we're kind of in Tim. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good. So uh, that's a tool not only to design space, understand them, articulate them, but if we, if we, if we work with human and space, we have to a bit uh, have an approach to manipulate that, and that one works. Um, is it about 3D printing? Is it, if I am responsible for that big tool that will have a huge impact or the capability to have one, is it about what kind of value I will have him to endorse? Is it about parity? And he's going to generate value for who? For the people along the river or for the 1% who have a Tesla and just would like to be, yeah, I would like to have a 3D printed house because it's cool. Is it about social statue or is it about emergency? Um, Ivan Ovchnikov is telling us stuff that are, I could quote, he's the Dumbledore founder. Do you know him? Do you know the company? No? Yes. I like to bring you novelty. We are at two thirds, so it's like five minutes. I told you I will be much longer. Anyway, if you find 3D print, is it about mapping complexity? Is architect, he created double dome. And he says that. No. Я часто думаю про модульную архитектуру и задаюсь вопросом, где же ее пределы? Какие географические ограничения можно ли доставить ее на другой конец света? Ограничена ли она природными и климатическими условиями? Как она поведет себя при критических температурах? Какая площадь оптимальна для жизни? Сколько на самом деле нужно человеку для комфорта? Какие эмоции может и должна вызывать архитектура? Можно ли поставить архитектуру на конвейер, повышая качество за счет технологий? Насколько важен дизайн для современного человека, его формирование и что такое дизайн в архитектуре в целом? Какую функцию может нести модульная архитектура? Должна ли она быть статична или меняться и двигаться со временем? Создание дома должен ли тратить человек на это многие годы? И есть ли вообще пределы модульной архитектуры? Хватит думать, пойду работать. I mean, kind of cool. It was his master project. Uh, I think it was f five years ago. Uh, he created uh, a, just a system. Uh, somebody's talking about old technique. You don't want to be very nerd sexy, just to make a good affordable house to optimize it. People well paid, so you have a good corporate uh, mood in the workshop. Certified material, not work with shit. Sourced wood and so on. He ended up now to make that kind of wood for like 35,000 euro mounted in three days. Now they have 11 factory. So maybe it's a bit of balance of everything instead of being extremely sexy to make the cover of uh, something, magazine. He's just doing good at many level and he reach it. I'm not making commercial for him. I'm just thinking he's, he's the balance uh, solution for now. And as you don't have any concrete foundation, maybe that's the secret of it. Um, Dan Hill, we met him, talked. Um, the next challenge in urbanism is the balancing act between the 20th century system and the 21th century system. It's thinking like it has, to, you have to design for people, for real people. It's much more interesting than architecture. Everything lays here. That's his pitch. Uh, he's a designer, urbanist, but he's a designer that works for urbanists and he's working for Arup. I assume you know Arup. They are like one of the biggest engineer office in the world working with architecture. So they solve problem for architectural big, pro big project. So system was the challenge. There are shared mobility, microgrid, nanogrid, super local renewable, storage and sharing of energy locally, assembly and co-housing. Uh, we work, is it about transmission? Now, today we are transmitting an EU project. You are learning, I assume, 
relevant information from each other. Uh, in our studio, I'm 50% professor also in the Institute of Design in Bergen, and we also continue a bit the dogma of Dan Hill and the protocol with like what's going on between houses. So that, that's a huge collection of houses that have been specifically designed on cultural factor from people. So they observe people and they design a house with attentive to rituals, really bottom up. It really changed everything, the relation of the house and materials. Is it about critical independence? We, Bigita, you are very involved in design thinking, and we met um, somebody who, who is coming, uh, actually did from Stanford and so on, uh, Joe Mellin, and he's a researcher designer. He works for Microsoft now. We talked about the 3D. It was surprising because when I'm listening to you, we talked about the 3D printing, but actually, what, what is there between the 3D printing and us? A computer and the computer actually are we free from the computer does it create a pattern on us and actually he's working a lot on Microsoft on, a, on the interface and they realize actually he told me it's really strange Alexander because I see CAD building that really go from the outside of the without really a deep reflection outside of the screen and build a bit like what I could call myself the, the Rhino generation, which is very easy to make a curve and so on. So you see from Japan, New York, London, you see exactly the same shape or mirror, like perfect half circle, poof, done. So I think, what is the, are we, do we have the control of the tool, the software that we are using, or does it a bit control us? Is it going to, is it going to be the same for the 3D printing? Like we are going to have a predefined aesthetic frame that will actually be international and how can we handle that uh, so I'm questioning the interface that we control the 3d printing because we don't we will not have a direct contact with it is it about unleashing unknown where I'm talking about the software do you know him yeah we met him in the head in Geneva it's a it's a space which is 3D printed using a, mechanic, uh, a mathematical algorithm, which is, which is um, very interesting. He called it the grotesque digital. It's creating extremely strange patterns. That doesn't really belong to an existing aesthetic uh, uh, period, actually. A bit like Giger, Alien interior nearly organic I think that's why he's putting this dramatic music is it is it about beauty from I had the idea of when we talk about materiality and recycle we worked with a big industrial group on the recycle they wanted to be the good guy they have 200 uh, uh, tons of waste per year and we talked with uh, clients of them and by interviewing people we realized Recycle is okay, but it has to be hidden. Why? Because I want the product to look like a new one. I'm okay to pay for recyclability, but I don't want to live with it. Why? Because it looks like shit. Okay, so you want a recycled product, but that looks like a new one. Yes, that's what I want. So actually, when we interview also people, According to Factor Beauty, here it was for a big, big project for uh, ch uh, chairs. We went to different countries all in Europe, Germany, Nordic, and so on. And in, in, in uh, Milano, we had a feedback from Matteo that just told us, you know, uh, that's a Norwegian chair. That's an Italian chair. Then he looked and said, technical factors and nice frame and so on. I mean, your chair is, it looks a bit like a dentist chair. Bleh, I don't care. Say, I will buy that. Why? Because in Italy, everything is sexy. That beauty is religion. And we valorize beauty first. Function after. That, is, it, even the agent, they say, it's much, it's recorded. I'm sorry, cartel, I didn't want to hurt you. That's the brand of the producer. This one is definitely less a bit ergonomic than that one. So that one is much better for you. But this one looks better. That one in Italy, it's a big boom. This one, they have a problem to enter the market. Then we start to question, what is beautiful? And then the Italian answer, monochrome. 
So then the whole chair is red. So actually, if you want to enter the Italian market, you have to be beautiful first. Remember that. We did that for all the country, and we had a strange, a funny game, uh, just with aesthetical criteria according to each country. Is it about balance beauty? We heard about the name balance when we are 3D printing. That's an artist. It's funny because we don't talk about art here. It's only about engineer, customers. I mean, the value chain is. I mean, designers, artists. It's, the word is complex. I met a lot of engineers that switch to artists, so they are engineers slash artists and so on. So, and this one is one of them. Ned Cad, he, he can he he did that's a facade with small piece of metal, uh, and actually they are moving with the wind and they are creating actually a vibration a air displacement that also take away uh, um, uh, some ventilation system within the parking and at the same time creating beautiful values. So uh, it's visualizing the displacement of air. Um, can we implement that on 3D printing? Is it about adaptive time? Also, I don't know, did you talk about 4D printing in your project? Not really. That sounds amazing. Because 3D printing is three dimension, okay? If I'm correct, X, Y, and Z, okay? Then you remember the, the four dimension? the time. So then if you introduce that material and you tell him, okay, in that, in that momentum you are here and in 10 seconds I want you here. According to what? External stimuli, heat, pressure, moisture, whatever. Then just imagine about the, the uh, building material. When there is sun on it, maybe the whole roof will switch in a biomimic, biomimic form way to another color to capture the sun and when there is rain coming it's going to retract maybe to collect water. It seems it's on the way. For now researchers are working on that but only in extreme condition. The one I showed you before, the space one, because I think maybe that's where there is the most cash. Because nobody wants to solve the, the problem for the plastic river. For now. But I assume maybe maybe it will maybe if there is a tech transfer it might work. But I'm 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 discovering really the 4D printing and uh, it's it's unleashing a lot of potential. You remember the architect before with the mathematic that project and I'm soon done. I mean two slides I think or oh, one even. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is an original picture of Ferdinand Cheval. Ferdinand Cheval, he's a postman. Do you know the story? No? Yeah. He's a postman in France. And actually, he didn't have cash, you know, postman with a bicycle. So he was going to post postcard with nice place of all around the world. And when he was delivering that, he was dreaming. Because it was just dream collected from all the parts of the world. So he was nourishing a fantasy. And he was just coming back from home with his empty... Uh, you call that book, mailbox behind his bike, he was filling up with stones. And then he started to build a fantasy palace, stone by stone, during all his life. So that's called the Palais of the Facteur Cheval, and he built that himself without any knowledge of architecture whatsoever. He also created his gravestone. It's kind of massive, it goes, it's not a facade, it goes quite long, it's like 30, 40 meters long, and it's a, it's a palace. But what's interesting, it's when you start to look at the pattern here and the column, and you, I, I compare on two screens, I have two screens at the studio, literally the same algorithm in space. So I'm thinking uh, imagination versus algorithm. Uh, what, 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 is there a pattern here? So maybe if we, if we try to sum up, maybe it's about... Uh, to tackle uh, the 3D printing tool. It will be about emergency and scales, resource and connections, time and parts, details and research, longevity and parity, independence and complexity, beauty and people, greed and transmission, story and unknown, extreme and words, balance, machine, and ultimately maybe about a house. Um, I have the chance to meet 
Ah, I had the chance to meet uh, uh, Jean in a project recently in Grenoble. We we're working with researchers in Grenoble. 28,000 researchers in one city. If you have never been there, it's nice. He created, uh, that's a, what you see now, it's big like that. It's, it's an artificial uh, borealis. You know, in Norway, this red light, uh, green light in the sky. It's a Norwegian Birkeland that created that at the beginning, but he wanted to make a machine and he didn't finish it. He finished it. And instead of cashing in and say it's mine, it's open source. So for $13,000, he he's building one for universities. So if you want one, you can have one. It's a very nice guy. And we talked about him about with a neurologue and a specialist of natural ecosystem. We were talking about life. And we, everybody was trying to now to be rational, to find a balance, to solve the problem, you know, to try a method. And then John came and told us, you are stupid. So what do you mean? Because life is not about being stable, putting in system and so on. He said, La life is per definition, as an astrophysician, I can tell you, like cosmos by definition is only about instability. And the neurolog came with, he, he succeeded to hack Parkinson's uh, disease. So he's putting uh, something here and the person has stabilized. And says, so correct, when we are working, we are in permanent instability. And he said, if you try, and we try, by exercise, if you try to rationalize, to take control of your brain, because it's automatic, like breathing, if you try to take the control of your brain, you are going to fall. So then we were thinking, oh, so it's time we try to make everything fixed, stable, stabilize. Yeah, it's totally, it's totally the wrong way to go. So at the end, we end up here. I know Ombra and Atrice, they, they are cultivating the, the, we talk together and we say we have to embrace complexity because it's complex. So sometimes I, I try to sum up and say, uh, uh, so the best way I find out is that.